Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for shelter, your building sheltering others walls made of living stone Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gather today many the gifts hearts yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, sons of your kingdom come. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church. Welcome, and how good it is to almost bathe in the music and uh, in, in the words and text of this wonderful hymn. Thanks, Steve, for leading us always in, in our music work ministry here. And welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Welcome to St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church in Midland, Ontario, where it doesn't look like spring at all this morning unfortunately, but it'll come, right? We'll have an hour of spring and then it'll be summer, so it looks. We continue to carefully and slowly open um, our in-person ministry here at St. Mark's. It is still very much helpful for us to wear our masks as much as possible and to uh, keep socially distanced to some degree, but things are beginning to open up how important it is to go slowly, show the recent numbers where they talk a little bit about a smaller spring wave coming our way of infection. So, um, and we certainly hear from people who still get affected by Omicron. So let us remain careful and cautious and patient, but things will come and things will improve. We know that for sure. We keep praying for the members of our community and the world at large. We pray for Beth Trounce as we learned of the passing of her husband Peter. Beth and Peter moved away from Midland last fall. We continue to pray for Lilo and Anton, for Court and Rosie, and 
we had to add Wendy to our prayer list as she's awaiting a heart procedure to come this week. And we continue to pray for a world in so much trouble, for the people of the Ukraine and Russia. And today we symbolically will be praying for Svetlana with her husband Omar and their daughter Hind. They are relatives of Deborah and just recently made it out of the conflict zone, are hoping to make it to Canada to join family here. And we continue to also pray for the activities of Life for Kids in Nairobi, Kenya, um, a home of, of children, um, orphaned or, or abandoned children um, that we support there. We're still looking for a quarter sponsorship for one of the children, Samson, and a quarter of uh, sponsorship would be about $42.50 per month. And finally, St. Mark's really needs your support. It is your gifts of time and talent that make our ministry. Without your support, we are nothing. So we invite you to seriously consider where and how you could help. Help us to share the good news in our community and in this world. So please consider praying for our ministry and consider what else you could possibly do to support us here at St. Mark's. All this and so much more we bring before God, expecting good things. Let us worship together. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. So let us come together as we pray together, and I invite you to speak this prayer along with me. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. something from Martin. Oh yeah? What do you want to know from me? How far have you moved away? Oh, 
not that far. So I'm, 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 I'm just about, it's about three kilometers, a little less, I believe. Well, because, you know, I want to know where you are. Oh, you can come with me. Yeah, I haven't been yet, so... Um, but why are you asking all this? Well, you know, Martin, people move away from God all the time. Oh, but that's something different, Sue. You know, the distance that I'm away from the church doesn't necessarily mean that I moved away from God. You sure? I'm pretty sure that you can be close to God even when you live far away from the church or the place you wor like to worship at. We have people who live far away, like in Sault Ste. Marie, in Vancouver, in Guelph, like all over the place, and they worship with us. Hmm. But will they come to church? I, I don't know. I don't know whether that's possible. Maybe they go to a different church sometimes, but one thing is for sure. What? That God is, is in our hearts, and if we look for God and want to be close to God, that's possible wherever we are. But I like to see people. I know. I like them too. Whenever we're together on a Sunday morning and I see people coming to church, like the ones we have here this morning, it, my heart is just happy. Me too. And I know it's important for us to be together as well, physically and to support one another. Yeah. Thank you for coming and all you who are far away, make sure we're all close to God together. Exactly. That's the point. Cool. Let's go on. I want to hear what God has to say. Yeah, let's listen to the word of God. Our first lesson is from the book of Joshua, chapter 5. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on that day, they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Listen to the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, O Lord. Let's say it together. You, you surround, surround me, me with shouts, shouts of, of deliverance, deliverance, O Lord. Lord. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. You surround, surround me with shouts, with shouts of, of deliverance, deliverance, O Lord. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. You surround, surround me with shouts, shouts of, of deliverance, deliverance, O Lord. And I acknowledged my sin to you, 
and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, O Lord. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in times of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. You surround me with shouts, shouts of, of deliverance, deliverance, O Lord. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule who have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, O Lord. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. You surround me with shouts of deliverance, O Lord. The second lesson is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling to the world, no, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal th through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Listen to the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Let us now prepare to receive the good news, the gospel of Christ. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of Luke from the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And if I may say so, it's a rather long passage. If you would like to sit down in between, that's totally fine. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. 
There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. <clears throat> but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get a fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fetid calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Good news, the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. And now may the love of God be our inspiration, and may God's goodness shine forth in our meditation. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we all know it. The challenges are in front of us, right in our face. A world at war again, COVID-19 not completely over yet, 
a climate that will continue to change with us doing very little about it, species going extinct, fertile lands being wasted, churches of all denominations and sizes facing enormous challenges, and we are no expectation. Who knows how high prices may go? Who knows what is going to happen next? The list goes on and on. Yet, we are surrounded with good news stories. We are reminded, you surround us with shouts of deliverance, O Lord. Or in a different translation, be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. It is true we are reminded this morning of plenty of good news for the world and for you in it. For a long time the people of Israel found themselves in a desert. Many describe our situation today as a desert experience. The Israelites just got by with the love of God who provided them with enough food, enough manna for one day at a time. But now they have found the promised land, the new refuge and home and new way of being. And they eat the food of that land. Reminds me a little bit of what these males are going through, all things new. The Apostle Paul speaks us, to us of the same. Everything is transformed into newness. The past is not forgotten, but reconciled. God's greater plan comes into view and everything appears in a different light. See Everything has become new. Soak it in this morning. Hear it loud and clear. And do not forget. The highest power, God Almighty and loving, is not satisfied with pain and suffering. <coughs> Even if we bring it on ourselves, there is a way out. And God will guide us on that path, provided we pay attention and follow through, obviously. But soak it in. Listen and hear the good news in all trouble. And watch the scene unfold. The one who went his own way, who thought he could do what he wanted, and who was keen on being apart from the higher power. He is returning. Yes, he has lost everything. His journey has not been like he had hoped in the beginning. At the point of great pain, he is reminded there is a way back. At the point of total loss, he remembers getting closer to God will help. And being the least in the father's household is better than being all alone. Soak it in and hear it and see what is happening. God is not satisfied with our pain and suffering. Instead, instead God welcomes us back and even throws a party for each and every one who turns to the highest power, the power of love and life. Sure, human nature can get in the way. I cannot begin to count the times I found myself connected with the other brother, the one who stayed and did all the work, the good one. I'm constantly talking to him in my own so soul and in the community. Often it is about limiting the love of God to people who are like us. Good people. Why would we help someone 
what obviously is no good. Addicts, convicted criminals. Why help someone who is not even a Christian? The second son in Jesus' parable has many voices, many voices in our society today and in me. He is alive and well. We tend to tally up our neighbor's falls and wish to see them suitably punished. You made your bed, now lie in it. In such moments, the idea of a merciful God offends us. But soak it in. Hear and see that that is exactly what God offers to us all. Everybody, everybody is invited to the party and celebration. And God gives God's very best. God will rejoice with us and isn't satisfied with pain and hardship or pettiness for that matter. So why should I remain petty or begrudge someone of a good outcome? And seeing myself falling back to that attitude, why would I not join the younger son who suddenly came to himself? Came to himself, that's what it says in Luke. Instead of pointing out someone else's shortcomings, I might as well admit how I participate and contribute to conflict, I might as well admit to my own reckless behaviors. And as you and I do this, a true miracle happens before our very eyes. Soak it in, hear and see. Because in a remarkable turn of events, you and I become like the Father in our gospel story. As we count ourselves blessed that the highest power, the God of love, is a God of forgiveness and unearned grace, we begin to extend the same invitation. We become like the Father in this story. Or as Paul wrote, we are ambassador, ambassadors for Christ. We act as Christ's hand and feet and share God's goodness. We no longer hold grudges, but reach out. We're willing to share to the point of giving our very best to welcome and celebrate the goodness of God's wonder-filled world. Soak it in this morning. Hear it loud and clear, and do not forget. Our faith is the ultimate good news story. No matter how St. Mark's will be doing, and no matter where political leaders and econo economic developments will take us. The highest power, God Almighty and loving, is not satisfied with pain and suffering. Even if we bring it on ourselves, there is a way out, and God will guide us on that path. All you and I have to do are listen, learn, trust in God, and apply what Christ teaches us. Yeah, soak it in, listen, and hear the good news in all trouble. Let us just stay close to the God of love, grace, and forgiveness, and all shall be well. Amen. and live
The feast of life is ours, and we can share. So let us reflect for a moment of how you and I might be able to share of the abundance of God's love and his great invitation throughout this week. Let us reflect on what we can give back to God from what we receive. And so we pray over the gifts we give back to God. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And so we continue in prayer.
drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. <clears throat> Jesus formed the disciples in the way of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Ukraine at this time. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive, receive our, prayer. our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving, especially remembering Bev Trance, who lost her husband, Lilo and Anton, Kurt and Rosie, Svetlana and family who are refugees from Ukraine, and Wendy Porter, and my friend, Armand. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who is dead, was dead, is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as Christ has taught us, we continue to pray, saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My peace I, I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot
and glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or understand. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened on the journey. Almighty and loving God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, motherly, majestic, and mighty in love, bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go and be in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.